Sally, I know you're busy. I don't want to be a pest, but I, I just had to talk to you. Look, it's okay. I understand. That's what I'm here for. But I'm here all by myself. I get scared. I don't know what to do with myself. I get... My heart starts throbbing. I feel like I'm going to die. Most of us have gone through the same thing, Elena. It's all part of the withdrawal. I haven't had a drink in two weeks. How long does it take? It doesn't happen overnight. You have to work your way through it. That's all I keep hearing. I have to, I have to. I've been doing everything that everybody tells me to do. And I feel worse than when I was drinking. I know how you feel. I went through the same thing. Don't give me that. You had a fancy house. A rich husband to take care of you. Nice clothes. I've never had anyone to take care of me. So don't keep telling me you know how I feel. We're not the same. No. No, we're not the same. Our backgrounds are not the same. Our drinking got us to the same place. Until five years ago, Sandra Blaine had been a secret drinker. For years, she was able to maintain the appearance of the perfect suburban housewife and mother. But as her alcoholism progressed, the facade crumbled. She began having blackouts. It became necessary for Sandra to cover up her constant drinking and her erratic behavior with lies. In her confusion and desperation, Alcohol became more important than her husband and family. For Sandra Blaine, it took almost total physical, emotional, and financial collapse before she was able to accept any kind of help to deal with her alcoholism. She was one of those people who had to lose her health, her husband, her children, and her home. Sandra's recovery began with her physician treating her immediate medical needs. She was admitted to a recovery house where she began to learn that it was possible to live without alcohol. But this was only the beginning. After leaving the house, Sandra's continuing recovery plan was based on regular meetings with a group of people who understood and cared about her and her problem. How's it going with you, Sandra? Oh, all right, I guess. You sound a little down to me. Well, I wonder if it makes any difference whether I drink or not. When they took my children away from me, my home. I'm a grown woman and I have to live with my mother. I feel like a little girl. Believe me, Sandra. I know exactly how you feel. I had to live with my son-in-law, Sandra, and boy, that was really rough. I felt like an intruder all the time I was there. The best thing I found was to go to work right away. Oh, sure, that's fine for you, Sue. You're a career girl. All I've ever been is a housewife. I mean, who's going to hire me? I don't know how to do anything. Didn't you do anything as a housewife? Oh, yes. Well, what? Cleaned and cooked and sewed. Yeah, there are a million things you have to organize. Listen, Sandra, if you could do all that, you could do almost anything. But I've never had a job. I mean, I, I can't even type. You can learn. With the encouragement of the group, Sandra Blaine was able to enroll in a general business course. For the first time in years, she was able to deal with the difficulties and frustrations of learning new skills without the need for alcohol. Oh, no. You must be really tired. Well, I've got to get it done. Yes, I know, but why don't you go to bed now and then get up maybe an hour earlier in the morning? I wish I could, but I have a test tomorrow. Stop. Now, the kind of job you've indicated you're interested in is as a clerk type. Yes, right? I just finished school, and I do 60 minutes a minute. Even though she had successfully completed her training, Sandra discovered that it was very difficult to find an employer who would hire a person who had not had previous 
work experience. It was frustrating. At times, Sandra felt like giving up. But the hope of getting her children back gave her the determination to keep trying. Hello. Um, I'm looking for work, and I was told I should come here. What type of work are you looking for? A typing. We have quite a few typing jobs available. They'll be found on the clerical board, board number two. If you find something you like, jot the numbers down here and drop it in the basket. An interviewer will be glad to send you out. Good afternoon, Mrs. Blaine. How are you today? Good, thank you. Let's take a look at the first job. Okay, this job calls for uh, a minimum of three years typing and general office experience. Oh. On this particular order, I don't think there's room to negotiate. Perhaps we should go and check the second job out. All right. All right. Now, this particular job is also a typist job. 50% of your time will be spent in typing, and the rest of the time will be in general office work. And I think with this job, we have the possibility of negotiating to have him start you out as a trainee. many fingernails that I just wanted to take a night off and forget it all. Oh, I was tempted. Really tempted. Just one glass of wine. But you didn't take that first drink. That's the important thing, Sandra. You got through it. All the frustration, the anxiety, the pressure. That's really what it's all about, Sandra. Facing up to responsibility without having to take that first drink. Four, four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one, four. One, four? No, I think that's where I'm mistaken. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Okay, get back to me tomorrow. Jim, uh, if I may, I'd uh, like to use uh, Sandra Blaine on uh, next month's uh, inventory report. Who do you plan to have work with her? Uh, Charlie. Oh. She's been with us a very short time. You sure she can handle it? I've had my eye on her for a month now. She seems to be very efficient. Are you sure? I am sure. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay, so, Charlie, you know what's happening. Oh, sure. No problem. Oh, Sandra, you know Charlie. Oh, of course I do. Yes, how are you? Good. Sandra, I'm going to take you out of the bullpen. You're going to do uh, next month's inventory report. You're going to work with Charlie. Wonderful. You know, she's learned more in a couple of months than you did in two years. She's fantastic. I hope you can keep up with her, Charlie. I'll do my best. It's all there, right? Yeah. Come on. What do you think? Well, it's good, Charlie. There's something on page five that doesn't seem quite right. Why don't we rewrite it? Yeah, okay. Hmm? Let's do it tomorrow. I tell you what, I have to stay late to finish up some other work, so why don't I rework it, and then I'll just check with you first thing in the morning. Okay. See you tomorrow. I'll get out, Charlie. Things looked good to Sandra. She was making her mark at work and gaining self-confidence. She began to feel that she could take on more responsibilities. Hello? Yes, she is. Just a moment. Sandra, see you. Thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, yes, I did call about the apartment. I wonder if I could see it on Saturday afternoon. Fine. I'll see you there at 2.30 then. Goodbye. Aren't you rushing things a bit? Mother, I have got to get out on my own. I can't make progress staying here. Well, yes, of course, but... Are you sure you're ready? You mean, will I drink? 
The answer is no. I'm not going to drink. I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. I only want what's best for you. I know, Mother. And you don't have to do everything all at once. <laughs> Look, you are treating me like a child. I have two children of my own who need me. I just want to put my life together in order to get them back. That's all I want to do. Plenty of classic space. Oh, it all seems so small. No, it's average size for the price you want to pay. How many people will be living here? I'll be alone for now, but I expect my children to join me before too long. Well, maybe you'd like to see something larger then. I think I'd better. Sandra was anxious to prove that she had put her life in order and that therefore she had the right to regain custody of her children. When you were in court the last time, the court favored the mother over the father, but that's not the case any longer. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that the court now has a tendency to uh, honor the status quo and keep things the way they are. Wherever the children are, the court is inclined to keep them there. But things have changed since that time. I mean, I, I have I've overcome my illness. I've, I've just gotten a promotion at my job. I'm moving into a wonderful new apartment. How long has it been since you've seen the children? Uh, well, it, it has been a while, but they're out of the state. That's part of the problem. You see, the children are now in a new school. They have their own friends. They have uh, new playmates, a new neighborhood, a new school, new teachers. It's going to be very difficult to persuade a court to take those children out of their existing circumstances and put them in a, in a strange home. They have but a whole I'm of... their mother. I mean, I have their furniture. I have their toys. I need them. I want them. I have a place for them. Everything is set up for them. And I really feel that we're going to go in there and win. Hi, I'm Barry. Oh, hi, Barry. I live right down the hall. Are you moving in? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can never get any of this mess straightened out. <laughs> Do you have any kids? They live with their father. Mm. Want to help me? Mm. Mary! I'm in here, Mom! What are you doing in here? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I hope he hasn't been bothering you. Not at all. He's just getting acquainted. Yes, I know. He thinks he's the welcome wagon for this apartment <laughs> building. <laughs> I'm Judy Hollander. Oh, I'm Sandra Blake. Hi. Now, Barry, you go in and wash right. up. Bye, Mrs. Blake. I'll be in in a minute. All right. He's a very nice boy. Thank you. Yes, he is. This is a nice building. Mm. I think you'll like it here. Oh, by the way, do you play tennis? No. Oh, you'll love it. I tell you what, as soon as you get settled here, I'll treat you to your first lesson, okay? Well, Charlie, I, I hate to tell you this. We finally found someone you can work with. Thanks a lot, buddy. Now, isn't this the first time you've turned in one of these three days before the deadline? So this little lady doesn't know the meaning of a coffee break. She's a bigger slave driver than you are. I couldn't have done it without your help, Charlie. Okay, listen, you two. Jones has got a big priority job coming down. It's going to mean working nights, maybe weekends. But we can't get started with it until tomorrow, so uh, why don't the two of you take the rest of the day off? I'll buy that. So will I. <laughs> No, none for me, thanks. Reads good to me. Well, that wraps it up. Let's get out of here. I have to recheck these figures. <laughs> hey, let them go to tomorrow. We're way ahead of schedule. I'm starving. Come on, I hate to eat alone. Come on, keep me company. I can't, Charlie. Okay. I'll give you a rain check. Okay. 
Don't stay too late, huh? I won't. Good night, Charlie. Sandra Blaine here. Hi, Sandra. It's Sue. Oh, Sue. Sue, listen, I'm sorry I didn't call you back the other day. It's Tuesday night again. We haven't seen you at group for a long time. I'm sorry. But listen, I've been so busy, and everything's going just great. To Sandra Blaine, everything did yeah. seem great. What she didn't realize was that she had been isolating herself from close relationships. That behavior was similar to her behavior when she was drinking. Sandra was trying to run her life without the help of others. In doing so, she was becoming very vulnerable. Motion denied. It is the judgment of this court that the respondent, Willard Blaine, shall retain custody of the minor children, Richard Allen Blaine and Sharon Lucille Blaine. Keep your eye on the ball. I'm sorry, Judy. I'm just not with it today. Something's bothering you, isn't it? Do you want to talk about it? Come on. Why don't we go over to my place? Whatever it is, it'll turn out all right. It always does. Drinking quickly affected her work. And, uh, what happened here? Where? Right here. That's not the way we discussed it. Sandra was trapped. Once again, she had to alibi and rationalize her behavior. Charlie must have been daydreaming. I'm sorry, Lee. I'll fix it. Charlie, you feeling any better? Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit. I'm having a hard time shaking this cold. Is there anything I can do for you? No, I'll be all right. Well, uh, take care of yourself, huh? Bye. I don't care what the judge says. You got to him. I will want those ch children. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them from you. Be believe me. You're not going to get away with this, Willis. You're not. Please. Please. Look, Sandra, I wasn't born yesterday. Now, I know things haven't been in the right with you for quite a while. 
But we can't have you missing so much time. Your work has fallen off considerably. You could have a great future with this company. But unless you solve your own problems soon, we're going to have to let you go. So I uh, called Bob Fox today. He's expecting you. Look, Lee, I can handle my own problems. No one in the whole world handles their own problems. I really don't know what I did. It just happened. I, I took a drink. I don't know why. You didn't just take a drink. You set yourself up for it. How? You made the same mistakes so many people make when it comes to sobriety. As soon as you managed to get on your feet just a little, you thought you could handle it all by yourself. I thought I had to handle it all by myself. Yes, but with the help of other people who understand you and your needs. When you left that group, you lost the people who helped keep your life in balance. You quit seeing your mother. You moved into a bigger apartment than you really needed. You built up unrealistic expectations about your children. You overworked. And from what I gather, you avoided close personal relationships. When you walked out of that courthouse, you were set up to drink. After I started drinking, I, I felt so ashamed. I thought it was all over for me. I thought I could never come back to the care unit and face all of you. Thank goodness there were people at work who got through to me. A lot of us have had to come back and start over again. The good thing is that you did come back. Now I know how important it is for me to protect myself from that first drink. With the help of the group, Sandra continued to learn how to deal with her problem. She accepted the possibility that she might not regain custody of her children. She reestablished contact with her mother and moved into a smaller apartment. She no longer had to constantly prove her self-worth by doing more than her share at the office. Gradually, Sandra brought her life into balance. She was able to tackle a difficult problem for anyone, a meaningful one-to-one -one relationship. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Come on in. Hey, great place you've got here. Thank you. Am I the first one here? You're the only one I've invited. Well, to what do I owe this unexpected pleasure? Charlie, I uh, thought I'd take you up on your rain check. Which one? Dinner, <laughs> movies, concerts, <laughs> at the beach? Come on, Charlie, this is tough enough on me. I like you. I do. But I've been afraid to get close to you or anybody else. Now I want to try. All through my sobriety, the words that have really done it for me where I want to try. I want to try. Elena, just like you, I was scared. I was all by myself. I didn't know what to do, even though I thought I did. It was tough. On that last drunk, I felt like I was going to die. Maybe we're more alike than I thought. Still, it seems so hard. <laughs> it is hard. But for me, it was worth it. Thank you.